Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with a new topic, the Convergence of Fourier series. But before getting into that, <coughs> let us see what we've seen previously. So previously we derived these two equations. The first is the synthesis equation in which we find the x of t in terms of the exponential function we, we, we have already discussed. <coughs> The second is the analysis equation to do what? To find the Fourier coefficients. Now if you remember and you know that I told you that the Fourier series representation is only for periodic signals. I told you, right? Yes. Now there is a question in our mind. The question is that is it possible to represent all periodic signals in terms of Fourier series? So this is a question in our mind that can we represent each and every periodic signal by a Fourier series? So it could either have an answer yes or a no. So what do you say? What do you say? So, I will not give you the answer right now. We'll get into the discussion. This question leads us to the topic, the convergence of Fourier series. And you know what convergence is. You know what the opposite to convergence that is divergence is. So, let us get into the topic. So, the first thing that we do is that the synthesis equation, we have been integrated it from negative infinity to positive infinity. That is an, in an infinite interval of time. So, it will result in our original signal that is x of t. Say, we integrate it now for a finite interval. Let's say that I do the, uh, the summation, sorry not the integration, I do the summation from some value of n, from some value of negative n to positive n and I have this a k exponential of j k omega naught t. So this is the case. Now this uh, that was for, a, for an infinite interval. This is for a finite interval. So it would be definitely something shorter, something, a truncated form of it, a finite form of it. Let me represent it with an x n of t and it is named as what? It is named as uh, truncated or finite Fourier series. So I will name it as a truncated or finite Fourier series. So now this would be a less better, this would be a less better approximation. <laughs> what, should, what should be the word that I use for less better? So this is a lesser better approximation of the original signal than that we have been discussing for the infinite interval of time. So if this is the truncated form and we are not including all the values of n, so we could have some difference, we could have some error and let me represent it with an e of t. Because we basically from the signal and system point of view, this would be an error signal. So the error signal would be what? It would be the difference of the original signal that is x of t and the approximated, the lesser approximation that is x n of t. This is x n of t. Fine. Now in signal and system language when we want to calculate the strength, we want to calculate the size, we want to know the impact of something. So we need to calculate the energy of that signal and how to calculate the energy of that signal. So we say that to quantify the approximation error, this is the approximation error. Let me name it the approximation error. Wait a minute, approximation error. So, what do you have is now to quantify this approximation error, we take its energy over one period to quantify. And what do I name it? So, let's see, it is a capital E n, it is a capital E n, and it is integrated over one period, the absolute of E of t is squared with respect to t. This is how we know the effect. This is how we know the size. This is how we know the impact of it. The error over one period. The, the, the energy of the error signal over one period. 
Now, now if I do what? If you know uh, in place of this e of t depends on what? This basically depends on the Fourier coefficients a k. This depends on the Fourier coefficients a k. Why? How? Because this x of t also has the Fourier coefficient this also. So let me write it like this that it is equal to x of t and I write the equation that I have just written that is from k from negative n to positive n. What do you have? a k exponential of j k omega naught t isn't it like this it is right so have a look it depends on the magnitude of a k fine so what do we have is the book says that it has been found in order to minimize the approximation error in order to minimize the approximation error so you write it you write it hurry up in order to minimize the approximation error the best or the optimized value of a k is in order to minimize the approximation error the best or the optimized value of a k is this a k is equal to 1 upon t integrated over an interval t x of t exponential of negative j k omega naught t so this they say that this is the best value or this is the optimized value for what for the error to be minimum so if you see this is exactly the same equation that we've already seen that is the analysis equation this is exactly the same equation that we have seen previously how did it come now this we don't know this the book says that this is you know used by scientists and this is the best value maybe it was used before that right before it was properly developed but this is the best value to in order to minimize the approximation error now what do you have what do we learn from this point we learn that the Fourier series coefficients will remain the same from this point we learn that the Fourier series coefficients Fourier series coefficients remain the same for what for a finite Fourier series finite Fourier series and infinite Fourier series so IFS for infinite Fourier series FFS for a finite Fourier series so this is one point that we have learned now now if you want me to uh, you know if you want to know the physical interpretation of this meaning that it, ha it has the same uh, you know Fourier coefficient so what does this mean so this means that for example you have a signal and you want to uh, you know expand it or express it for n equal to 100 so you want 100 terms which means that is a finite Fourier series fine so you've got 100 coefficients in that particular example right now if you have the same signal you want to have it for n is equal to 200 which means that now you want to find 200 coefficients so what do you have is this phenomenon implies that the first 100 that you already found they will remain the same now you need to find you do not need to find the 200 again you need to find the remaining 100 only so this is what this implies of course you know infinite is not possible you would go to 300 400 500 whatever it is but whatever you found previously those will be applicable in the next case as well as i said if you have 100 found already so if you need to find 200 you do not need to find the first 100 again so this is what this means now if x of t has a fourier series representation as n increases e of t decreases now let me tell you that if x of t has Fourier series representation what do you do as n increases as n increases what will happen the the error in the energy signal e of t or the, the yes e of n would decrease e of n would decrease so this is the next point now that n increases n increases so have a look 
as n would increase you would have a better approximation n would increase more you would have a more better approximation the higher the value of the n the best is your approximation isn't it like this it is so what does it say as n increases the error decreases so this approximation would become more and more better as n is increasing so the difference signal would become smaller and smaller the approximation error would become smaller and smaller and the energy of the error would become smaller and smaller and ideally speaking ideally speaking if n increases such that n increases infinite if n becomes infinity ideally so have a look this would be the exact representation this would be the ideal representation of x of t which means that the difference between the two would be zero the approximation error would be zero the energy of the approximation error would be zero so if n equals infinite this would imply that the energy of the signal e n would be zero and that is what we have got fine what did i say was now that n increases so the the approximation you know improves this is what i did not say the approximation improves as n increases and ideally when n becomes infinite the approximated signal becomes equal to the original signal and you know the rest of the story but now again we have a question again we have a question i told you over here that if x of t has a fourier series representation so again again i have what I have a question mark if x of t has so this has is something that I need a question mark over here how would I know that this has a serious representation or not how can I know if it has or not if it has so then these conditions would be satisfied but how would I know that this has or not so for that we have two sets of conditions so I would be writing it over here that we have what we have two sets of conditions for convergence of Fourier series and convergence mean what that it would you know resemble the equal the, the, the exact signal two sets of convergence of two sets of conditions for convergence of Fourier series so the first set the first is a single condition and what does it say is that over one period that uh, over one period the signal has finite energy over one period over one period the signal has finite energy so this is you know the first condition and how do i represent it mathematically so mathematically we say what where is it where is it yes that that is that is i would write over here that over a period t you have x of t you have the magnitude of it squared and you integrate it over one period with respect to t so if this is finite which means if this is less than infinity what do you have is that you can have the Fourier series representation of the signal which means this would converge to the original signal this is the first condition so what would this implement what would this implement that uh, it has a finite energy so this would be you know the approximation would be uh, what equal to this original signal you could say so they would cancel out each other in this particular case again the the energy of the error signal uh, would be would be zero the error the energy of the error signal would be zero again now let me tell you one point one one point that over here also would be applicable over here also the energy of the approx the error signal is zero what does this mean so what does this mean this does not mean this does not mean that 
this signal and this signal the value of these two signals is the same at each and every value of time this does not mean this what does this mean this value this can have a single value this can have another value we can have a difference we can have a difference we, which means we can have an approximation error but the energy of that different signal that error signal would be zero this is what this point means and if you want me to write it for you if I write it for you so what do I have that this does not mean that these two signals are equal at each and every value of time uh, so this is an important point I should write this doesn't mean that these two signals are equal at what are equal at every interval of time or every value of time but what does this mean this means what I would put an arrow this means that energy of the error signal is zero and I told you that in signal in system point of view the important parameter is energy so if the energy is zero that's it that's it fine so that was the first condition the second condition is <clears throat> you know not a single condition so I would have to remove uh, what the board so let me you know put an option over there also yes or no so we are working on this question yes or no right now the second set of conditions basically has three conditions and it is known as Dirchlet's condition or what let me check the spelling or you could check it in your book so the second set of condition is the Dirchlet's conditions so it basically has three points so coming to the first over one period x of t must be absolutely integrable in order for x of t to have a Fourier series representation it must be absolutely integrable over one period x of t must be absolutely integrable and you know what this means you know what this means so if I take uh, this is the integration you take the absolute of x of t and then you integrate it with respect to t for one period this should be less than infinity and this is what it means that it should be absolutely integrable now uh, you know uh, talking about absolutely integrable you know in a finite range so everything depends on the Fourier coefficients have a look ak so the first and the foremost thing is that this ak should be finite you know so this is the first you could say another condition if ak is finite then you could have another possibility that you add them up together and the summation is infinite so again this would be infinite so you could also have this so this would imply what this implies that if x of t is infinite which means this thing is infinite so this automatically implies that all the Fourier coefficients are finite this automatically implies this is that clear the second the second condition so this you could say is the effect of this particular thing the second condition is again over one period x of t over one period x of t must have bounded variation and bounded variation means what that is it should have finite number of maximas and minimas in one period that is finite number of maximas 
and minimas in one period. So that is the second condition. It is something easy to understand. Fine. The third condition. There are finite number of discontinuities. The third condition states what? That there are finite number of discontinuities. So again over one period there are finite number of discontinuities and uh, discontinuities and what happens as well also each of also each of these discontinuities finite so i hope i have written the spelling correct discontinuity well it does not seem correct but you can you know this is not in english class so the first condition was what that over one period that it has a finite energy right this is the first condition the second condition was basically the Dirichlet condition which included three points the first was that over one period x of t must be absolutely integrable if I have uh, an example for you guys, so if I relate to point number one, so if x of t is one upon t from you know zero to one and it has a time period of one, so what happens is this is a signal something like this. If this is one, so this is one, two, three, and how do we have it? Uh, let me you know check it in the book to confirm it properly. yes so if it's a zero as well so it would come like this till one fine so it has something it is something like this similarly for a negative one and i drew this at a wronger place so you have the signal something like this so if you see it mathematically you integrate it for this particular phenomena what happens is that what happens that this is not absolutely integrable so it does not fulfill this condition uh, this condition for, for this one sorry not this one so which means that it does not have any Fourier series representation similarly talking of the second point it has have a bounded variations that is it must have a finite number of maximums and minimas so for that we have an example uh, sine of 2 pi by t sine 2 pi upon t and the period is one second so i recommend you to draw this graph in in matlab you draw this in matlab and you would see that if this is you know zero and this is you know t so what happens is that this has this sort of a graph and then it would increase like this something like this which means so have a look how many are the number of maximas these are the number of maxima it does not have a finite number of maxima does not have a finite number of minimas which means that this is not uh, satisfying condition number two so this also not have a Fourier series representation the third point is this was not satisfying condition number one the third point is that there are finite number of discontinuities also each of these continuities is finite so if you have a signal like this you know it's uh, it's zero and directly it jumps till infinite a very large value so it has a discontinuity and that is very large so this does not have a Fourier series because this is does not satisfy condition number two but if you have at zero a discontinuity occurs and it jumps to a finite range let's say a so now this has a Fourier series representation this has a Fourier series representation because this is a finite discontinuity also if you have a finite discontinuity but the number of that discontinuities should be also finite for example if you have a signal like this if you have a signal like this so have a look what is this telling you each of the discontinuity is finite but the the number of discontinuities is not finite which means that it is again not satisfying condition number three so it also does not have a full series representation so 
if I tell you, if I tell you, now if we move back to our question, move back to our question, that is it possible to represent our periodic signals in terms of Fourier series? So ideally, ideally, the answer is no. Ideally, the answer is no. Each and every signal cannot be represented as a Fourier series. But have a look, have a look to these signals. I said that theoretically or ideally each and every signal does not have a Fourier series representation and these were some examples that do not have a Fourier series representation. So have a look which one of these signals is of practical importance. None of them. None of these signals is of practical importance. None of them is used frequently. Have you ever seen this signal so frequently? Do you know about this signal? What sort of a signal is this? What sort could that be? This could be although related to the unit impulse that it has an infinite magnitude. But these are the signals that do not have any physical importance. They are not used frequently. So I could say what? I could give the answer to my question in one other way. And I could write as what? That all useful practical periodic signals have Fourier series representation. All useful periodic practical signals have Fourier series representation. So ideally, theoretically, mathematically my answer was no, but my answer is yes if I talk about it practically. Is it fine? So, you've seen some non-important examples maybe we see some important signals in the videos to come maybe we saw some examples as well i think i finished this video over here in the next video we see the periodic square wave till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do remember me in your prayers goodbye